don't talk too loud. I don't want to scare it off. <laughs> Yeah, morning Rod. Welcome to Wednesday, 6th of March, and look! Oh, that, well, that's probably the bit that I didn't tip out last time. It hasn't rained. So, the ground's still moist, it's still quite soggy, but a couple of days of this, I'll be happy as smiley. I've no idea where today is taking me, or what I'm going to be putting on video or sharing with you guys. No idea. Um, the intention is I'm going in to see my dad in hospital in a minute, uh, going in early. I've already been down to the shed. I'm just coming down and checking once more before I go. Um, already been down here and checked everybody. They're all happy. There is no point in me refreshing this bed now. I'll do that this afternoon. So they're okay. That'll do for this morning. Nothing as far as I'm aware is due to calve in the next few days. Um, I think phase one is kind of complete. You folks in here, you're all all right. You've got plenty of grub. I know they've got plenty of grub. I know they've got plenty of grub. I've already been down here, so I already know. Um, we'll probably do a bit more this afternoon uh, on the yard tidy up. I've got to finish pushing that pile of stuff up over there. I'm quite tempted, maybe later on, I might actually come out with... Um, I'll let it dry up a bit first. I might come out with the screener bucket on our digger, our little star screener. I might actually shift, sift through a load of that, take the lumps and bumps out of it. We're going to need some hardcore in the yard when we put this shed roof up, especially if I'm going to do some concrete and we're going to need a bit of hardcore. So we've been umming and aahing about what we're going to do with that pile. I was going to tip it all in a hole, but you know what? Some of it I can make use of. Uh, the sand, that's a landscaping sand. That is for, if you're putting down turf or stuff like that, that is really, 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 really expensive stuff that someone's been digging a hole in. Okay. Sure my dogs will be in there sooner or later. Has he come out the other side? No. I don't know if there was a rabbit in there. And then the fox has gone in after the rabbit. There's no real obvious signs of... There's a print there. That's a rabbit. Yeah. Might be a bunny wenny in there. OK, right, so I'm off to Bristol, see me dad. It's early. I'm going to try and get in there and be the early bird, catch the worm before the car park is absolutely completely chocker, like usual. And then we'll come back and we'll do some work on the farm, all right? Fantastic. Oh, stuck in Bristol traffic again. So, just been in to see Dad, spent a couple of hours with him. He is absolutely climbing the walls to get out of the place. He, he definitely really, really wants out. Um, but, <laughs> but there's a bit of an issue because he lives in South Gloucestershire and his doctor, his doctor's surgery um, is in Gloucestershire. Uh, we're trying to get a bit of help for him. Uh, just someone to go in a couple of times a day just to make sure he's OK, make him a cup of tea or anything he needs any help with. Um, and Gloucestershire is saying, uh, well, he lives in safe Gloucestershire, so even though his doctors are here, we don't want to pay for it. And then safe Gloucestershire is saying, well, his doctors are in Gloucestershire, so we don't want to pay for it. And it's just because he lives that close to the boundary and where he is and his doctors are in different counties. So, I mean, it will be sorted, but like the poor lady, Victoria, who's trying to do it for him said, it's, it's just complicated stuff because you've got two people fighting over who's not going to do it. <laughs> so he's in there climbing the walls and I'm trying to explain to him, you could go home, Dad. You could, um, and you will, once we've got these people 
organised over who's going to do what and where and whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, he could come home and he's he's quite capable, if he's careful, of doing it himself with just a bit of help from the family. Um, but it's just that time when there's no one there, and there are certain times of day when there's no one around at all. And if he should fall or should have a problem, we just we're just looking for a little bit of extra cover to. Um, uh, make sure that he's okay. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to speak to the social services folks later on and just sort of say, can can we not take him home? Can we take him home? He's miserable in there. Uh, I know. And if it's if it's going to be a week, ten days before you can get anything in place, well, we'll pick up the slack and do the best we can for those week, ten days. Because I, I don't want to leave him in there. He's miserable. So, and I would be if somebody if I thought I could get out and the family wasn't doing anything, everything they could to get me out, I would be miserable too, so, yeah. Unfortunately, Victoria, bless her, uh, she's on a training day today, so it's kind of just messages going back and forth and she's coming back to me when she's out on a break or, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's vexing. That's the polite word, vexing. I mean, I shouldn't let it bother me. I should let it just wash over. But it does grind my gears. If you get one or two people, I mean, I, I, I mark my footpaths pretty well. Everybody knows where they are. There's no argument as to where the footpath it is. You'd have to be actually blind not to see it. But even then, they, they can't stay on it. They got to walk all round it or anywhere but on it. Um, I don't know, it's, call it territorial or being possessive or selfish or whatever you want, I, I don't care, but you know, this is the land that I bought and paid for. So they've got no financial interest in this ground at all. All they've got is the right to cross it. But we've spent our life well, we haven't finished yet, paying for this. And then the government gives them the right because there's an ancient footpath that was probably used by farm workers years ago. In fact, I know it was used by farm workers years ago, particularly that one across there. That was a path for one man who lived at the patch up there. It was a path my grandfather granted him when he worked at Kite's Nest, down, Kite's Nest Farm down there. One man to go to work, that's what that path was put there for. Grandad put a sleeper across the ditch and everything so he could go to work. But some idiot, or very clever person, decided to mark it on an OS map and we didn't even know they'd done it. And then when the um, Rambler Association came, they said, oh, it's on a footpath, it's on a map. Well, no, it was a, it was a path for one guy to go to work. No, it's on a map. Therefore, legally, you have to open it to the public. And it's stuff like that. I mean, even now, they've gone through the gate off there. They're not on the footpath. They've completely wandered off on the neighbour's land now. There's no footpath where they're going. They're just wandering where they want. And that's kind of why we get upset. If you're going to exercise your right to walk on a public right of way, which has to be a minimum of three feet wide, okay? That's what I have to supply. I have to, I have to supply a minimum of three feet. So I don't have to supply any more. I could fence both sides of that and make it three and a half feet wide. I could do that if I wanted to, if I was gonna be really anal and you know, pathetic and petty about it. But people don't respect, they don't respect it. They don't respect the land, they don't respect the owner, they don't respect the time, blood, sweat and tears that goes into keeping that. And it grinds my bloody gears. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. I should let it wash over me, I know I should. I should take a chill pill and just accept it. But I can't. They've gone now. Can calm down again now. I'm off my soapbox. But <sighs> there's all these ramblers associations and walkers and 
freedom to write, right to Rome, and all these people saying, oh, we should be able to do what we want. Whatever. But it's a case of, if I had the right to go and walk around their lounge or their living room, or across their garden, just God given right to do what I wanted, they wouldn't like it. I mean, their answer is, well, it's not your garden, and it's not in your house, it's just a field. And that's, that's the common answer I get. It's only a field, it's just a field. No, it's my field that I, I pay for and I look after, where I keep my cattle and it's my business. It's not, it's not your public park to come out and exercise your dog. If you want to walk the path, fine. I, got, I can't do anything about it. Walk the path. I mean, again, if I was a really petty arsey about it, I could go down there and insist they all stay on the path. But would it do me any good? Probably not. Doesn't mean I don't feel like doing it. Okay, right. So it is obviously Wednesday afternoon. That is a little bit mucky in there, but it's not terrible. So I'm not going to worry about that today. We've had a dry couple of days. Again, this in here, I did refresh this yesterday. This is not terrible. Nothing is due to calve. I don't think I need to bed this out again today either. It's beginning to look like I'm gonna have a day of doing very little on the farm. Well, I'll do something over there in a minute. Um, and again, with these fellas down here, they're probably kind of coming up due a change, but that's actually not that bad. And there's not many of them in there. The floor is basically dry. I'm not gonna bed them out today either. So no bedding today. Brilliant. So what I might do is go and push some more of that up instead. I can do that. So what I should do really is change the bucket over, put the five foot bucket back on. But the six foot, six foot bucket is on. And provided I don't go mad at it, we should be all right. No, 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 no. Yeah, just over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll move it later. I'll, I'll move it in the summer when it's drier. Yeah. Cheers, Phil. That's probably the first time you've ever seen that gate open. Yeah. Uh, we put it there just in case we wanted easy access in from this one to the one down the bottom there. Uh, it's not as big as that one. It's only a 12 foot gate, not a 15. But I think if we move that muddle around the corner there, move that lot down there, and then have a good scratch of it in the yard, might have to get a bit of clean stone to go over the top. But I reckon we'll have made ourselves a small car park. Definitely. Right, so that's that done down there, or at least for the time being. I was, when I came back round, I was going to push this up, just push it out of the way, but do you know what? We're a bit shy on wood chip, so I might get the guys, when they come back tomorrow, um, to put some of this for the chipper. It's only going to be a couple of bucketfuls on the skid steer, but right now we're so shy of wood chip, a couple of bucketfuls might make a difference between a clean bed and a dirty one. So. <clears throat> right. Nothing else to do down here. Uh, the last two bales I gave both the bottom and the cows, they've not really enjoyed very much. They're not rushing through them, but uh, they're going to have to eat them first. So they're not getting any more tonight. Sorry. <laughs> 